start thing now. Yeah. Okay. Here we go. Official. <laughs> the start has been started. Um, okay. So I, ever lazy, uh, spent like 15 minutes drawing up notes. Um, I don't think this is a particularly ch technically challenging one, but maybe we'll have some interesting discussion about it. Um, so yeah, so this is the second of the, I guess we call it the guides. The guide? It's a guide. Okay. Second guide. Uh, one of them, is the, so the problem is that uh, is called double evaluation. Um, and it basically introduces a bit of a problem that people may not have thought about before in that it accepts expressions that are computations. Um, so we need to be careful about how we evaluate tidy expressions when we tidy eval expressions when we design functions, because we can fall into the trap of evaluating expressions more often than we should, especially if they are computationally expensive. This is kind of, to me, this is kind of like a, okay, but, you know, it's not always the developer's problem if you pass it something that is ex like computationally expensive, you know, like you kind of look at this example, I'm going to go through like the document and my notes at the same time um, because I did not actually prep properly for this. <laughs> but like, if you take this variable, you go, okay, so you take this variable and you want the mean and the standard deviation of it. This seems normal, right? But like, you implicitly know that this is going to get calculated twice or whatever. And then if you multiply it by 100, you know, you're still going to get this computation. Um, and then if computations are slow, it's like partially in your domain to do that. Like if you like, you know, have this times 100 and make it sleep and print out messages, then clearly it's going to get evaluated twice, once in the mean and once in standard deviation, right? Like this seems obvious, but also like, you know, there's you have you have some responsibility to um, fix that, if you will. So it is kind of worthwhile to think about when you're doing that because you it, it it's something that you kind of as a function developer you do have to think about like oh this is going to be evaluated twice, which means if the user decides to give it something that's very slow, it's going to evaluate twice. You know, like all of those kinds of problems. So. Um, you know, when you summarize stats times 100, blah, 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 it's clear that it's evaluated twice. Um, so what we can do to avoid it is to assign it to a constant. Interestingly, they, they really love transmute in this um, documentation. I, I try to figure out why transmute was necessary when you can just use like mutate here as well. Um, but you need to evaluate it inside of a tidy eval function. So this transmute accepts tidy eval expressions. So you would translate var to a different var. And then you just use a plain var in the mean and standard deviation uh, in the summarize. And then now it only gets evaluated once because you evaluate it once here, right? And so it's kind of like a defensive thing to kind of create an intermediate variable if you know that you're going to use it again and again and again later. Um, you know, you could do this in an across as well, like, you know, var is var, and then across this, do it once here, and then take the mean and standard deviation and whatever. That should do the same thing. Questions about that? So oh, this wait. example is um, like not a great example. I mean, sorry, that's not that's not me trying to be rude, but <laughs> I don't, you know, <laughs> the system that sleep thing. So this would happen maybe if you have a like a ton of columns in your data frame that you're trying to like string match or something and your var that you're feeding them is like part of tidy select of like, this is what you're matching on or something. Like when would this actually happen? It says it takes, um, computations right um but what what would be a reasonable computation that you would be feeding it there because the... it's a good question i actually like again i i think about the like if you told me oh yeah like it evaluates twice it makes sense but like you know usually it's like you multiply by 100 or something and that seems normal i don't know what you would be worried about i guess you could be worried about like modeling like if you run like ran like an lm function or something on this mm -hmm. variable and so like let's say you're mapping over a massive list of data frames and you're running a regression on each nested data frame with a variable in that whatever and like you have this expression that runs regression or something but like these are really contrived examples because i i don't know like okay. I think about this. That's helpful. I mean, it doesn't come up that often, but if it does, yeah. you should be aware of this. That's fine. That's a fine yeah. answer too. Versus like, yeah. I run this all the time. And then I'm like, oh, I need to be thinking about it differently. <laughs> okay, that's helpful. It is. Thank you. So something that I find, uh, or 
I don't know. I think it's uh, interesting to think about, like, it's not a bad idea to just think this way, like, do this in case, because every once in a while, you'll have that one thing that does take forever. And you're like, oh, God, why did I not deal with that? And so um, I think that's interesting. And then the other thing is, like, the reason they use transmute in all their examples is they only use that column from then on out. And so transmute uh... drops everything else. And so it gives them a nice small data structure to deal with past that. Um, right. So, so yeah. it's, it's like, because it's a very contrived example to begin with, we can make it extra contrived by only <laughs> keeping this variable. And yeah. Mean it. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, depending on what you're doing, you might be, um, a lot of times you're only returning a column. So like that would be a, a way to do it if you're doing it in a pipe. Um, I thought I guess usually in this kind of thing you'd be adding a column more likely. Uh, whatever. If you're returning a data frame, right? Like if you return yeah. just this, right. like this means very little. You'd want to yeah. keep the grouping variables at least. And yeah, yeah. It, like, it doesn't uh, seem very well, natural trans- to pass in a data frame and then pass return a data frame, but with none of the identifying information except the values you calculated. That seems weird, but. I'm going to complain about the documentation just not being like yeah. practical a lot. It, so we if can, it, you know, if it were already grouped, it would keep the group columns. So in this case, uh, like if you're, if you're putting it through keep, a summarize, it keeps does transmute keep group variables. It does. It does. Okay. I'm pretty. I mean, I guess I could be wrong. I'm pretty sure. Um, you too. Yeah. yeah, it's mutate, just that mutate keeps uh, everything else. And, well, not if you yes. do keep equals none, then you would get the same behavior. Right? Well, that's yes. Yes, that's, that's what replaced. I forgot about those. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You can um, tell this is also older docs because they still use migrator pipe here, unrelatedly. Go for it. I think that like not returning very much is not crazy for like a helper function that you're feeding into map or so, that you're feeding somewhere else. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But yeah, but I think they do it. Just so if you do run the examples with something, then it's the minimum, like literally minimum reproduce or, you know, minimal reproducible example. So, mm-hmm. yeah, um, it, I think there's, there's a helpfulness of like, this is what they're showing and that needs to be balanced by like, but where would I use? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which is like hard, hard, but yeah. Yeah. So glue strings are like the exception that in it, in that it doesn't suffer from the double evaluation problem. Um, that's mostly because it's not evaluating your code. So we talk about this as accepting expressions that are computations. Glue strings in this context would be um, casting that expression to a character string. So it converts it to a symbol and then the symbol gets to a character. And so this is kind of like with name computations. It's not that it's not doing it twice. It does do it twice, but it doesn't actually evaluate the code in question. It just returns the, like it just glues in the variable as a care, as like it runs as like expression and then as character on the expression. So you, when you pass it times 100 sil, it doesn't evaluate that. It just puts it in times 100 right, sil. Right. And so it's still evaluated twice. So when it says it doesn't suffer from a double evaluation problem, kind of, because it doesn't actually, exp- you know, evaluate. It just like translates to code or to string. Does that make sense? I don't know if that's true of all glue expressions though. That might just be like, is that true in all glue strings? Cause I feel like that's like when you I, use glue. I think this like, is, I think this might be a special flavor. I think this might be their in glue. Uh, under the hood this is yeah specifically for their glue you know their way of dealing or using glue for variable names basically which is the um so like the walrus operator here yeah specifically like not all glue expressions are like this this is we're talking about specifically argument naming right glue strings because I'm pretty sure the whole point of glue is that it evaluates that variable. So. Right. So this is, um, I think we have it later. Uh, maybe not. not. Did we already do this? Anyway. Um, 
I think Arthur's uh, link is yeah, pretty good. Think it was to... But yeah, it's um, just it's in this specific situation. Oh yeah, and glue. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Although even still, like in this contrived example, I I, I am curious what's happening under the hood because it's like it's taking the argument of the expression that's passed to it and then kind of pasting that into the glue uh, the glue expression. Or actually, are they um, in this contrived example? The, what, which way, which example are we looking at? Um, this one, this oh, one. Oh, sorry, sorry. No, actually, so it is doing what I, I guess I thought it was doing. So it's got times 100 sil. Okay, not sil. Okay, got it. Yeah. Yeah. So it's just, it's just diffusing the expression and injecting the expression into the name. Is it diffusing it or is it quasi-quoting it and then converting the expression into a character. Actually, I, I don't remember what these are called. <laughs> but basically, it is, no. It's converting, it's like keeping the expression as like it's converting the expression to text, which I think yeah. is deparsing. I don't know. Yes. There are many words here yeah. somewhere. <laughs> Yeah, it, get there eventually. With the unquoting and non-quoting being separate sections in there, it, it's it reminds me of uh, enzyme kinetics in biology. <laughs> <laughs> you have non-competitive inhibitors and uncompetitive inhibitors, and oh, anyway. Oh, all right. <laughs> all right. So I think that the I think it's like embracing in like glue strings, but like the ones that are used here rather than like all glue strings like this is kind of confusing because it refers to glue strings as if like you know all glue like expressions are like this but this specifically means the one with the walrus um cool anything else you guys wanted to talk about here we good with double evaluation and doubly so they... <laughs> Triply so, hopefully. Because there are three of us. Three, I'm talking to the three people here. Hopefully. Yes. I am also good with this. <laughs> <laughs> cool. All right. I'm good so far, too. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Injection operators out of contact. So, this is more what happens if you go overboard with tidy eval and start using tidy eval where there is no tidy eval. Um, well, for the most part, this one, this bracket bracket one works okay. Like it just, you could, it's like math where you can add like infinite parentheses and it will just evaluate, um, which does cause some problems if you think, if you use it in um, kind of an express, like a context where you expect it to do data masking. So like if you do with data mean variable, and then you expect to be able to pass this variable in, um, it will evaluate SIL, but not like, but in this data context without like knowing that it needs to look in data for the name SIL. That makes sense. I said that very poorly, but basically this embrace variable does absolutely nothing. So it's trying to look for SIL, but it doesn't know to look in data. Cool. Um, worse, and you know, yet another reason not to use um, data reasons to use data masking instead of like metaprogramming and like diffusing and injecting is that the double the double bang and triple bang operators um, are implemented only in these contexts, and then otherwise do something completely different. <laughs> when you do work with it in base R. So if you double negate something, it turns it into a logical and then uses it to fall, it converts to false. And then because you do it twice, it converts to true. So like it, like it's, if you've ever multiplied in Excel, multiplied by like negative one or something, um, it converts to, you know, a, a number, it converts a Boolean to a number 
I think is what it does. And then you could like do it twice or something. Anyways, so d using the set of contacts will, if you're lucky, you know, convert <laughs> to Boolean and it'll just, you know, never complain. Uh, and, or it'll like just negate, you know, convert to false if you use triple bang. So best case, it will complain at you. And so, you know, you messed up. Worst case, it it, it it doesn't complain at you and continues onward and can, you know, continues to cause problems. This is very helpful, I'm sure. <laughs> yes. That's one of those where they, like, they used, they had to do something. I guess they didn't have to make it so convenient, you know, like they could have made it an actual function and then it wouldn't accidentally happen, but they needed to type it a lot and so they wanted to make something fancy uh i forget which one this is oh yes <laughs> <laughs> oh lovely yes yeah but yeah well, someone who sometimes knows just enough to throw exclamation points or braces i'm very glad we covered this <laughs> i'll be a little bit more judicious about avoiding exclamation points just be careful and that you make sure you always do it in something that evaluates as like a tidy expression, mm -hmm. then you should be okay. Okay, there's another one, another thing. Does this work on regular objects? The answer is kind of, or yes. <laughs> so we just talked about this doing um, the double, the embrace operator um, being able to be used because it's just like parentheses essentially. Um, but this is talking about using the embrace operator inside of a tidy eval function, but not on a function argument. Um, I wrote bad notes because I think this is near the end of what I need to write. Mm -hmm. um, but basically, it does work on regular objects as well. It just tries to end quote something that's like already inside the same environment. So it captures the value of the expression rather than the diffused expression itself. Um, this just means, for the most part, I understand this to mean that because it's already inside of this function environment, it evaluates to two, um, whereas this gets evaluated inside of a different environment, if I remember correctly. I forget how exactly how this yeah. works, but the way this, what, what the, the point is that if you pass the arg, it will capture the one plus one part. And then if you use it on something that's created inside of the same function, rather than being passed into it from the function, it'll evaluate this as two. But really, if you're passing something that's already inside the function, you should not need embrace operators. Because so then you where, already have that. Yeah. Where that can happen is if you are using that argument like multiple times within your function, you might uh, try to embrace the second time, but you've already done something to like, um, effectively force the argument so the argument's been used to do something else um, so let's say which, you did yep. this uh, <laughs> or you made some intermediate argument yep yep here there you go in this case i think this would actually still embrace i think that would totally that bar as well i'm pretty sure because so would that, would that not already do the same thing but that's because this, is, uh, this, be this variable is created. It would be ambiguous, and so it would be created in the. Sorry, this column is evaluate is created inside of data, but it creates a var column inside of data and a var here. But the embrace operator will refer to this one, so you would need to create like a var outside of the data uh, outside of the data mask, but inside of the function environment to mess yeah. it up, which uh, is still weird. <laughs> so, but, yeah, right, so oh, if, if, if you had called the on the left side, if you called that var two, and then you'd curly curly var two and summarize, that would uh, uh, result in this behavior. I think that that would fail because it would try to find it outside of the data mask. Okay. I think. Yeah, so the embrace operator bypasses the data mask and looks from either here or something created here. So if you had, I 
if you had this and for whatever reason, instead of doing it this way, you had assigned. I think, wait, before you do that, let's test the example that she said specifically. So do, I uh, just call it var two. Here? Yeah, and then embrace var two. I guess. Oh, curly, curly. Uh, right. Curly, curly, yeah. What does one do? Nothingness, just parentheses? One's just parentheses, I think. Yeah. I did mean embrace. I just hit the button once. Yes. Yeah. Besides the point. All right. So let's Pretty see. Sure this. this will just not work. I, mean, uh, I agree. Yeah. So this is looking for bar two outside yep. of this environment. Okay. Yep. So if you. And then I. Uh, go ahead. <laughs> did this <laughs> for whatever reason. I think this would still fail. I think that's um, probably going to be OK. Oops. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Because that just and it'd be the, the same. Vector. Yeah. And it's but the this same is reading as this as a no vector. Having... Yeah, OK. Yeah. But that's what unnecessary. Yeah. yeah, because you could just do var two here. So that so this is functionally equivalent to doing this. Okay. Because right. it's just passing the value of this var two vector. And that's why you can do mean var two or bracket bracket var two. Okay. I wonder what would happen if, if var two were also an argument, um, function argument. I mean, I'm, I'm wondering which like how, yeah. how what the search path is. So now do sil mpg. Or yeah, whatever. Did it do the same thing? I did actually you, don't know empty cars. Yes, yeah. look at your two uh, uh, results. Okay. They're the same mean and standard deviation. So it's it is using the local version preferentially, which is that uh, yeah, yeah 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 because That's the var right. two argument doesn't exist anymore because this var two has been overwritten by this var two. Yeah. yeah. And so if we change this to var, oh. Right, like this, this overrides that. And so if we had used. <laughs> Wait, this is, gets this. I just made this really complicated for no reason. Why did I do that? <laughs> <laughs> so var two gets created, but that's, this still doesn't actually even matter because this gets converted into a vector. So we're talking about this vector and then this var2. So this will just not work, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, the var2 doesn't exist. Because I didn't embrace it. But if I did. Oh, 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 wait. Look at what the error is specifically. It's object HP not found. That makes um, sense. So it, yeah, it, yeah, yeah. Because it's uh, not, right. as a, not as a variable. Sorry. Yeah. What is it thinking it is right there? It's uh, it like a character. It's like object, it's looking like for an object, an object a, named HB. Yeah, yeah okay. not within the mask. Right, and masking is basically treating columns as objects. Yes. I confused myself, but I thought I, I think you guys got it. So that's great. <laughs> well, I mean that's that's interesting. I was somehow like expecting that if um and in, in, in this example that um referring to Varth. Sorry, I guess when we had var two wrapped at some or embraced at some point that it would have referred the to the, into the var two is like the functional argument rather than the object we created locally within the functions environment, but it preferred that or I guess as John put it, it basically we're overriding that that object within the functions environment. Right. Yeah, the argument like no longer exists at that point. So the more, um, like I only recently learned about like dot env um, as a way to refer to things like outside of the explicit. But the more I understand like where it's looking for 
um, reference, I don't know what the right word is, references to things, the more, the less I am, the more I'm likely to rename variables <laughs> so that I don't accidentally do this. I think that there's like some third level of third wave of understanding whereby everything is just called var and data, but you're confident that it's being used the way you think it is. But I'm at the second <laughs> level of understanding where I'm not, uh, let me be very explicit because this masking yeah. and whatever stuff is fun, but maybe I'm someday referring yeah. to the wrong. <laughs> I tend to try to avoid name collisions, even, you know, like I'm pretty sure what will happen most of the time, but yeah, it just, it's, it can that's be why data, so. not data and stuff works, I think generally better. So here's yeah. here's kind of what I'm, I was trying to illustrate is that if you use var here, it'll refer to this var, but this embrace will bypass the var that's created here. Like the embrace gets you out of this environment, right. and then starts looking inside of this environment, and then at the argument itself. So if you have That's a cool example. Thank you. So yeah, so what I'm trying to say is this, I, I overrode var inside of the data mask. And so if you didn't use embrace, it would look for this var, right? But if you did overwrite it, uh, I'm going to make this really that. It will try to do the standard deviation of ten, but there's only one one thing. That's why there's that's why that's now NA. That makes sense. But this this var looks for the looks inside of this data mask because it is already data masked. This embrace takes you outside of this to this or and then this argument. So I think that's what I was trying to get at. Yeah, yeah, that's a nice minimal example of that. So going back to their example, um they use force, which that you would force. get into that, that situ this situation via something like we just went through, but force is doing the same thing where it's um, like. Uh, force is force the evaluation. Also. Yeah, so this takes one You would one never use that in your own evaluate life. Here. Uh, um, depends, so to. yeah, for the purpose of force um, it's especially useful if you're making like a function factory. If you're returning a function, you want to make sure that the right version, like that that variable gets captured <laughs> to be that value. Um, oh, yeah. And so, yeah, that's what force is for. And force, it's just nuts to look at. Like the function force is a function that takes X and returns X. And there's nothing like, it feels like, it, like you could just do just say x instead of force x um but it like it makes it actually evaluate it um and it tells you what it's doing like it tells I'm pretty sure this does it too yeah. this should do the same thing right like instead of force on, you I'm just not, do var i i'm pretty sure it would do the same thing and yeah. i think oh especially if yeah if you assign it um, yeah, if you assign it. Yeah, I think even without the assignment, even if you just, just printing it, just that, yeah, implicitly that would do it. Do the same thing. But the reason, yeah, force exists just to kind of tell future you, I did this in order to force evaluation. Um, yeah. There's no other use or utility. So it's kind of it, the like, opposite right. of lazy evaluation, and tidy yes. is kind of lazy eval, where it's like, okay, I want this var, but I want it like inside of this mask or mm -hmm. outside of this mask or whatever. Um, I want it to exist as it existed for the user, mm -hmm. not as it was for me. And var, uh, force is kind of the opposite. Well, it's like, I want it, I want what it was at that moment <laughs> when it came into the function. Um, or at that moment, yeah. if you call it like after. Too, but I, yes. I think function factories are the only time that I've ever used force, but I can't say for sure. Yeah, and that would be because you're passing something to a function, and if it doesn't get evaluated, it gets passed in as an argument to another function, and then it like could evaluate weird. So it's 
generally good to evaluate early. But I think uh, like outside of the scope of this particular question. Yes. So. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm going to put var. So I was kind of led to under, well, somehow I came to the understanding that curly curly was really just for data masking, but I mean, there's nothing prevents you from, or rather for arguments that need to be data masked, but nothing prevents you for just having a, let's say like a, a scalar value, right? Um, that's it's passed in it. It really won't buy you much. Um, yeah. But, so the way I the way I see curly curly is it's a length one triple dot. So you could do math in triple dot, right? You can like you know send multiple things. Curly curly, you have to send one thing, but you can do anything in it. Uh, whereas like dot data and dot end specifically only take character strings. Pretty sure. Oh, June was saying something about math. I don't know. Anyways, the whole point is that like it you could theoretically also replace this with dot end var. Actually, we're gonna read this one. You could replace it with this in this case and get a similar result. Right? Maybe context pronoun with a string, not a double vector. Oh yeah, he wants this. I think mm -hmm. maybe no. I actually don't know what happened. Oh, it's is it evaluating this? That what happened? Now I'm very confused. Um, List and, cannot be. Uh, and so. Uh, and bar, and that's happening. Um, what did it tag? Can you only return, refer to the environmental variable with the dollar sign? No, maybe we, no. Yeah, uh, no, we saw. Last week, I um, yeah, it, it can that, use double. That makes sense. Uh, oh, um, oh, wait, no, this week, yeah, can't. it's that's because, yeah, it's um. You would need to have a var to subset with. So this would be var. Yeah. Anyways, OK, I get that. But, I get why yeah. that would work. But, yeah, sorry, so because the function, data. yeah. Yeah, that's why it didn't make sense. OK, got it. Yeah, and so there you go. <laughs> you could use the date. You could use it to refer to something in data. Or you could have. it do that <laughs> and that's why that didn't work this is why I'm yes gonna, well this is why testing on the fly is uh yeah that's that's why uh interesting for the most part i recommend and unless it's this that we're like oh what is that how will that work yeah this is more just yeah you we have like I random think, questions so yeah i also feel like this actually helps i mean i i know that it can run afoul of things but it also really helps solidify understanding in my mind Definitely more slowly, but. <laughs> okay, that's an idea. So oh, hang on, why didn't var? Oh, because this is called MPG here, but it's actually referring to var the argument, and then that's why it's getting passed in. <laughs> All right. So if I had named this var, we would be getting something very different again. There we go. Okay. All right. I have tested my own, satisfied my own curiosities that may have not been super helpful for others but we did the thing okay so that's all the guides i think um 
we talked about this on regular Armin. So we talked about like it evaluating arg as the value of arg in this case. Mm -hmm. um, so we can talk about going through some of the like underlying functions that power this as well. Yeah. go through them slowly. <laughs> okay, so dot env and dot data and dot env. So you don't actually need to import these. These aren't functions. Um, so it's it's specifically a pronoun and then it refers it it's used inside of like tidy eval to refer to stuff inside the data frame versus outside of the data frame. Did we already talk about this? I feel like we did, but yeah. Yeah. Did we look uh, at this page already? I think we did. Okay. Good. Yeah, because I remember we talked about the um that the where does it live that it's a it's imaginary, but then you import it just to make things stop complaining. Okay. Cool. <laughs> um. You did so, talk about that. Yeah. Uh, even though I've already covered it, <laughs> so I have seen that sentence a few times now. Like it's not a function; it's a pronoun. Are there other? I get that it's not a function. That's fine. Do there exist other pronouns? Like, is that a word so, that I'm supposed to have an understanding of what a definition of a pronoun? I think not they do. Are. Like I think they defined, or you know, whether they made it up or they imported it from another language, that it's not really a thing that's formally a concept within R. But they talk about McGritter has the dot, um, per has like dot x dot y are okay. pronouns. Okay. Um, Thank you. Yeah. But I mean, if you wanted, McGritter if you wanted is... to use them, you you'd need to have either, I guess, Rlang uh imported let's say, let's say you're developing a package you either have to import rlang or maybe a tidyverse function that itself imports rlang right you can you can import dot data and dot env from rlang it's just it makes a placeholder yeah so yeah that so you can use okay. uh, uh uh use this use import from rlang dot data and that'll put Put it into your package so that it works fine um so things don't cool. complain but you don't like your package would also work without doing that yeah mm -hmm. you don't this actually is, I think have it was to... like a cran compatibility makes cran yes. not complain when you it do also that. makes if you have um the option in our studio to like warn you about things our studio will also complain if you if the variable is not defined so it gets rid of that too um but yeah it doesn't actually do anything it's that the function that um you're calling looks for it i had um we had a whole a thing where um i had a package that was basically a wrapper around dplyr at work and and around different uh tidyverse packages for some stuff that we were doing and therefore, every time we referred to a function, we would actually refer to our version of it. And uh, basically, so we had our own dot data. Oh, actually, no, it wasn't dot data. It was um, descend uh, desk in dplyr, which is kind of, I don't know, pronoun's not the right word, but it's also a fake function. It's just a keyword that uh, a range is looking for. And they changed something such that um it stopped yeah. like it was explicitly looking for dplyr colon colon desc or just desc and if you had another function that was or another package that was re-exporting desc it would fail and they fixed that for me and i was probably the only person who did anything like that where i basically i just had i had an alias for it and i needed my alias to, to work um it was a oh, similar yeah. Thing. <laughs> I, remember, I remember seeing you. I remember seeing this thread go by in R4DS, but I don't remember <laughs> what happened. Well, I uh, I put it up on the on GitHub, and they, you know, they're like, "Oh, uh, okay, yeah, we can make that work." <laughs> Lovely. I was like, "Look, I know this is weird. It's just this is how we have it." So, uh -huh. um, and I think that would be similar that you you might. I don't know if you can say our line colon colon dot data if that'll work um but it's a, it it's has. one of those that it would be fragile i mean it would it would stop things from complaining about dot data not existing um but 
uh, I don't like, I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't recommend doing it that way because that's not how they recommend to do it. And it could stop working if they change the way that code works, even if it works right. I liken the, those things like the pronouns, desk, et cetera, to kind of like this auto argument where like if you set var to auto, I guess it's more like if var is auto, like it interprets the things you put in and goes, if var is auto, you know, do this thing, right? And then dot data, if you use dot data inside of this code, it implicitly knows how to handle it so that you don't like have to define it. Like the same thing with the <laughs> desk in like a range is interpreted the same way. It's like it interprets the string of things that you put in and then says, oh, there's a desk wrapper. So we're going to take whatever's inside this wrapper and we'll reverse it. Reverse and it. And then use yep. it. Right. And so it doesn't actually, it's not actually a function. It's like. Right this whole it's other a, thing it's a flag for other functions to use yeah so Which anyway is not exactly r like in terms of how it <laughs> executes but it it feels like it's a very r thing. <laughs> it looks like a function it's like it, it looks like a function it walks like a function but it's not a function actually kind of yep. thing. it's like the anti-duck <laughs> um cool all right so we talked about that already i'm Totally don't remember that, but I might not have been here. Um, eval tidy is the function that powers the data masking um, portion. So eval converts the data into an environment, and then eval tidy uses the data mask part. So it it lets you use the pronouns um, and closures. Uh, closures I don't know if we've talked about yet. I think we not might. really. We'll do that more in the next section. Yeah, but this would be how you would write a function that works like mutate and select. No, like mutate and anything else that does like math inside of a data frame. Um, I can't imagine that we'd need to use it. It seems very rare that you would want to reinvent mutate. But it is yeah. the function that we are talking to when we talk about like dot data and dot env. So it's good to kind of understand that this function exists. And so if you find it inside of a, you know, mutate or whatever, this is the function, like this is the function that you would be looking at. And then <laughs> here's the explanation of what it's doing. More or less is how I read this. Yes. Don't create new art. Don't reinvent the wheel. Do things with vectors and you know keep things simple and you'll get like 99% of the way there. And then you know these problems are like tidyverse problems, like tidyverse <laughs> container problems, really. Yeah. Pretty much, yeah. Questions on those on eval tidy? Um many contrived examples mm. were put here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. and then the underlying function inside of eval tidy is as data mask, as data pronoun, new data mask. Um, the extent to which I understand this and feel like anyone really needs to understand this is uh, it's used in here and use this instead, <laughs> which is, I, I think, a perfectly valid. Like, I think that, that is accurate. That, um, like, this is a case where I'll, I'll that if you search the rlib or tidyverse orgs you find like one use or two uses of each of these functions that mm -hmm. they're just used in the thing above them basically uh so yeah we don't we probably don't ever need to use these uh yeah yeah yeah, well, that's, it's kind of remarkable the extent to which there's documentation for this and the extent to which there's fairly terse documentation for things <laughs> one might actually want to use within Arlang. That is kind of funny that I mean, I'm sure this is uh, this is totally uh, Lionel writing a note to himself or or Hadley, whatever, exactly. one of those like next to like the next or to Davis. OK, yes. Davis, you're coming in to work on this stuff now. Uh, here is so, documentation. Here... <laughs> Yes. Here's how oh. this actually all works. I wish there was a little like histogram of of like on the reference page of like, 
like a little bar chart of how often functions are used in like some relevant re repos or organizations that I would classify as like similar to mine. <laughs> so then you're like, oh, I need to learn this function. Oh, I don't need to learn this. This is not where I should be looking. This is an edge case that it's solving. Like that'd be a very helpful flag. Yeah. That's an interesting idea. So there's the the CRAN DB or is it CRAN or CRAN DB, whatever. There's a CRAN org on GitHub. Um, it's, I think it's just CRAN. Let's see. GitHub.com slash. Oh, Metacran, I think, right? Uh, but yeah, it's called Metacran, but it's just slash CRAN. Yes. And so you can search within that org and that will search the code of every package that's on CRAN. But that's not quite the same thing either because CRAN is like tooling. So like how often is it used in the tool right. that an organization would use? Well, unsure. I mean, closer to it's it, it's probably the best estimation you could get. For or, most things in our lang, you probably don't care about them outside of package style code. So I think it's a pretty good uh Predictor. Yeah, that's and so, helpful. I just wish I could so, just see that. So, that's good to know about. It. I totally did not. So I just kind of wish it was on the reference page somehow. Yeah, I, I know I'm at something that can't exist, but there's well, this information from you guys about like, oh, this is probably not where you need to spend any time. It's very helpful. <laughs> I, I'm I'm super intrigued by this idea now, and kind of I want to <laughs> make that. <laughs> so, I think there's so an North Studio comp. Talk from this last summer that uh, yeah. um, that 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 looked. At, I think there was some some package that basically was meant to scan ideas like let me scan my own uh, corpus of work and see which functions come up most frequently. But I guess you could just oh, I was physically a, any corpus. Yeah. Uh, who was that? So, uh, as data mask has 19 code hits in all of CRAN versus NQO has 2.6 thousand. <laughs> so, That's helpful. That's helpful. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I sometimes am in like, I don't know, something like Stringer or something. I'm like, oh, I know I need one of these basic functions. But that, this one. <laughs> I, I really like this idea. Huh. I, I'll go I want to, to play with this. But I'll go to your talk. Do they yeah. take light breakers? So the problem, oh. uh, man, oh, I got to figure out how to talk. search. It was Brian Shalloway's talk. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Fun spotter. Okay, here you go. I will. You that yep. Yes. Yep. You need to include the opening parenthesis, by the way, if you want to do these searches properly. So. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and then, yeah, well, I guess that. Well, I think you'd enjoy the talk in general, actually. Yeah. Um, so I will also link. But yeah, he basically searched through all, like he figured out how to like read through all of his like GitHub repos and like whatever. Yeah. So reference table of like how often you use a function. So yeah, totally exists. That's neat. Um, what was your comment about searching? Well, can you show me the... So um, let's see, regular expressions. Uh, about, okay, yeah, uh, putting so let's do... You want to, um, you have to be careful because, uh, like, like um, this, right? Here, um, don't have the window. Yeah. So, well, but you don't want to do our lang colon colon because some people might import it. Um, but so you you need to. Uh, I this, this should be a uh, a package. <laughs> to search GitHub, yeah. To search CRAN on GitHub, um, like because um, trying to trying to make this or sort this out. That I, you want to do, uh, like you want to do beginning of line or uh, space. Uh, I'm I'm testing something out okay. and then I will share it. Um, we'll share it like follow up here probably because I assume yeah well, I have to jump soon um, got crazy but this was fun I will link these notes at some point I'll actually just send John the markdown and he can PR it into like 
proper notebook stuff. I was not ready to do that this morning. Thank you for presenting. Right. It's very helpful. Yeah, we need to present for next week. I am out of town, sans connection for the next two weeks. So I will try to catch up. Uh, but... Well, good. <laughs> like... I'll show you an example. Thank of... you. You want to do um, regex, regex searches because you want to make sure that you're not. I, I kept getting things that were like, you know, function name. Oh, this Sam. also gets, yeah. And so okay. I was getting stuff like that, and I was like, no, I want to get just sim. And so, um, okay. so it has to be either the beginning of the line or oh, right. and that's still not quite it because it could be a parenthesis. You know, there are several characters that would be okay before it, but you don't want it to be part of a function name. Right. So I'll need to work it out <laughs> to get it exactly. But I, I really like this idea as a way to um, for these clubs the um read the docs clubs like you know literally uh as data mask like it's not in anything no one uses i mean some of them there could be it's like it's a new function and it's convenient yeah. but you know some of them are just so okay esoteric. but you also have to scrape the metacran like number of package downloads so you can properly <laughs> all of these by the number yeah. of users who use this? <laughs> All right, I, I give up. <laughs> anyway, I do think it's helpful to know like what's bread and butter and what is truly you've run, run into some very weird edge case. Yeah, yeah. So but, I, think right. I look yeah, forward I think to your tool, John. I can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> I, I will All be right. a number power user uh, of that learner. I I mean I think it could be cool to put onto your own docs. Like it goes a step beyond. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um add, yes, uh, add, like here's yeah. what people like from characters that i built i built all these things that i think are useful but the internet thinks <laughs> these yes. 12 are really useful so the other way to do that would be to ex like have like an end user like agreement where it would ping the server like google analytics style every time <laughs> someone uses your function <laughs> <laughs> there uh, are times uh, when i would like i use someone's package so much and like i told them thank you but still i just like wish like you know the 20 times i call this function every week i like wish he got a penny you know or at least a little <laughs> marker you know a little validation yeah, so ad somewhere. space so print out ads below yeah or, or or just a little ticker on his on his package down site yeah uh, that'll okay. be fun well i need to answer my phone um so, well actually i'm just going to text him and tell him i can't but uh <laughs>